Welcome to module three. In this group of videos, we will cover dilution techniques within microbiology. The first one that we will focus on is how to streak plate. Lastly, we will cover the detailed protocol for how to viable count. This will include setting up for a viable count, performing the serial dilution for the viable count, and inoculating spread plates and demonstrating examples of results. Here we'll demonstrate the quadrant streak plate method. Two organisms will be streaked, E. coli and Staphylococcus aureus. The quadrant streak plate method is used to dilute out an organism to a level where only individual cells are deposited on the agar. These will grow up into isolated colony forming units after incubation. You'll notice that the quadrants are marked on the bottom of the agar plate. This will make keeping track of the quadrant streak easier when you first learn the technique. Begin by sterilizing the inoculating loop. Allow it to cool. A hot loop kills cells. Using E. coli first on an organized workbench, we will aseptically remove a small amount of growth. In the first quadrant of the sterile agar plate, we will inoculate E. coli in a dime-sized area. Now the streak begins. Four streak lines are usually enough for a quadrant. Re-sterilize and kill all of the cells on the loop. This adds to the dilution effect. Fewer cells will be picked up from the first quadrant and moved into the second. The plate is rocked in the light so that you can observe where your streak ended. Enter the streak twice and drag across. Then do not enter the streak and drag across into the next quadrant. This also causes dilution. Sterilize the loop again. Make sure it cools. Rock the plate so that you can see where your quadrant streak ended and streak into the next section. The fourth quadrant is streaked in a slightly different way. Traditionally, you enter the third quadrant, drag the cells across and zigzag into the center. Sterilize the loop. The quadrant streak plate is complete and will now need to be incubated overnight to allow for growth. Now the Staph aureus will be inoculated. Notice how the loop is touched to the center region of the plate. This is just a check to make sure that the loop is cool. Only touch the loop to a sterile region of the plate if you want to perform this check. Watch each step again, how the plate is streaked, the loop is sterilized, and the next quadrant is streaked. The streak plate can be inoculated from a mixed culture. In this situation, multiple morphologies of cells may be observed as isolated colony forming units. Quadrant streak plates 
may also be performed from pure cultures to maintain purity. But the streak plate itself cannot be used as a pure culture. The colonies that are isolated will be picked and subcultured to make the pure culture. The plate is complete, the loop is sterilized, and an overnight inocul will be performed. These are the results from the streak plates which you observed in the previous video. E. coli and Staph aureus were both used to perform the quadrant streak plate. On the left, you can easily see the E. coli has been diluted around the edge of the plate. And in the fourth quadrant, you can see nicely isolated colony forming units. These colonies can easily be picked with a loop or an inoculating needle and transferred for subculture into either a broth or an agar plate. Notice that on the right, the Staph aureus is still producing isolated colonies, but that the colony morphology is different. The colonies are whiter in colour and smaller. Isolated colonies produced in either the third or fourth quadrant are appropriate for subculture. The viable count technique is a means to determine how many live cells are in this culture. Cells must be resuspended before diluting them. In this demonstration, a zero dilution, which is tenfold, will be performed. We will dilute 1 to 10, or 10 to the minus 1, then carry it through for a further 1 to 10 dilution, which will be a total 1 in 100 dilution, or 10 to the minus 2. The last tube will be the next tenfold dilution, but relative to the original, this will be a 1 in 1,000 dilution, or 1 times 10 to the negative 3. Label everything before you begin the viable count procedure. Non-selective agar plates will be required at the end of the technique to plate the dilutions. Notice that each dilution has two plates. This will allow for accuracy in the determination of the viable count. You will also need serological pipettes and a pipette aid for the dilution. For the plating, we will need sterile spreaders. The viable count begins by the aseptic dilution of your original sample. Loosen your caps and resuspend your original culture. Using serological pipettes, you'll perform a 10-fold dilution series. In each of the tubes for the dilution series, we have nine mils of sterile broth. To perform a 10-fold serodilution, you will simply remove one mil from the original and transfer it into the next tube in the series. Work aseptically to transfer your cells. The cells are transferred into the tube, but we do not use this pipette to mix and resuspend those cells. Rather, place your cells back in the test tube rack and dispose of the pipette. Take a new sterile pipette. This will have no cells on the outside and will not raise the number of cells in the tube. 
So first resuspend the cells in the 1 times 10 to the minus 1 dilution tube. Do this by gently pipetting up and down a couple of times. Finally, remove 1 mil of this sample. Aseptically transfer it into the next tube and dispose of your pipette. Work tidily. Remove wrappers to the side. With the fresh pipette, make sure you pick up now the 10 to the minus 2 dilution tube and again remove 1 mil. Transfer the mill into the 1 times 10 to the minus 3 tube. Remember, this contains 9 mils. You are adding 1 mil. That is a series of 10 fold dilutions. 1 in 10. Dispose of the last pipette. The serial dilution is complete now. You must move on to the next step of plating the dilutions. Remember, we cannot determine the number of cells in the original sample unless we plate them, incubate them, and allow them to grow as colony forming units. For each dilution, we have two plates. This will allow us to plate the dilution twice, count the number of colony forming units, and average them for accuracy. We do not plate the whole dilution, just a portion of it. Here, we're going to plate half a mil. We can plate any volume, as long as we know what it is and we are consistent. And then we can recalculate the dilution this was from the tube. Remove the half mil sample. Work aseptically. Transfer the sample by dropping it onto the surface of the agar. Repeat this for the duplicate plate. Notice that we're working from the lowest concentration, moving up to the highest concentration. Use a clean, sterile tip each time. Take a sterile spreader and move the inoculum over the entire surface of the agar plate. This will spread all of the cells over the surface and allow them to grow as colony forming units. The greater the dilution, the fewer the number of cells. At some point in the dilution series, we should obtain few enough cells to be able to count them at the end of the technique. Now moving up to the 10 to the minus 2, we plate in exactly the same manner. These plates will also be spread and allowed to dry. We do not want to invert the plates for incubation until all of this culture has been absorbed onto the surface of the agar. Make sure you spread thoroughly so that the cells are moved over the entire growth area of the plate.
the last dilution will be plated, but we do not need to plate the original sample because observing the turbidity of the tube tells us this will have too many cells to count. Hence, we do the dilutions. Once all of the spread plates have dried, they will be inverted, stacked and incubated overnight. The next day, the plate will be observed and the plates which have countable numbers of colonies will be used to determine the viable count. These are the results of the viable count technique. We only demonstrated the dilution of the 1 times 10 to the minus 1 through 1 times 10 to the minus 3 plates. As you can see in the panel, 10 to the minus 3 still produced a lawn of growth. A lawn of growth is when all of the colony forming units are so close together and so numerous that you cannot see the individual colonies. So the serial dilution was performed all the way down to a 1 times 10 to the minus 8 dilution. When we observe that 1 times 10 to the minus 5, we begin to see the separation of individual colony forming units. But it is not until we are down to the 1 times 10 to the minus 8 dilution that we can really count these numbers. In the enlarged image of the 1 times 10 to the minus 8 dilution plate, you would be able to count actual numbers of colony forming units. There are hundreds on this plate. We usually count between 50 to 300 colonies to assess a viable count. If we had performed one more dilution down to 10 to the minus 9, it would have been easier to count. Calculations are then performed. You take into consideration the volume that was plated from the dilution of the original. See the slides of the background information to learn about the calculation.